And now, a matter of execution. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I swear, Warden, I thought you'd never get it. Burton. Burton, your lawyer just phoned from the governor's mansion. All right, he phoned. What did he say? I'm sorry, Burton. So I lost. Really lost. Three hours, I'm going to die. I'm going to die for a crime I never committed. Burton, please. I'm afraid, Warden. Warden, I'm so afraid. I've been living this nightmare for a year. The accusation, the arrest, the trial, the conviction. I couldn't believe any of it was happening. I kept telling myself that sooner or later they'd find out the truth. Burton, believe First me. First I was confused, then I was horrified. Then I think I was numb. Then I was hopeful. I told myself that such a mistake couldn't happen. You understand, I had to tell myself that. So I was hopeful. And now, no, Warden, I'm just plain scared. Warden, I'm scared. Evening, Mr. Clay. Evening, Bobby. What can I do for you? A quart of ice cream, Mr. Clay. Next. I know. A vanilla for your mother, chocolate for your father, and... Uh... <laughs> Strawberry for me. Yeah, right. See, I remember. And uh, charge it to your mother's account? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's warm this evening. Uh, you mind opening the front door, Bobby? A little fresh air be nice right now. Sure, Mr. Clay. Air smells nice, Mr. Clay. It does at that. A sprinkler just came through this street and wet it down. Yeah, now just let me enter the charge, Bobby. Yeah, there. And here's your quarter mixed. Uh, no, 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 stay where you are, Bobby. I'll bring it to you. Just as soon feel the fresh air on my face. Here you are. Thanks, Mr. Clay. You're welcome. The street looks pretty, doesn't it? Mm. All wet and shiny. Mr. Clay, look at that car. It's sliding all over the street. It's out of control. It's heading right for the lamppost. Mr. Clay, look. The man lying there in the street. Well, the driver, he was thrown right out of the car. Come on. Mr. Clay? He, he's so still. Is he dead? I don't know. If he isn't, it's a miracle. Well, now you wait here, Bobby. I'll phone in a report. Get help in an ambulance. But, but Mr. Clay, uh, what'll I do? There's no one else here. I know what. The... Mister? M mister? C can you hear me? Please, Mister, open your eyes. Did. You opened them. What? What happened? You skidded. Hit the lamppost. Oh. 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 Kid, I'm hurt. I'm hurt bad. Yes, sir, but help's coming. Mr. Clay went to phone for the ambulance. Listen. Are we all alone? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a weak kid. Oh, I'm awful weak. I'm afraid I... I can't make it. I'm gonna die. No, mister. No. Hey, kid. Come here. Closer. I gotta tell somebody before it's too late. Oh, I mustn't black out before I... Before... Come here closer. Yes, sir. Listen. You... Tell the police. I confess... Listen, there's a man named Burton. He's going to hang tonight. He's innocent. Remember this kid? Burton's innocent. I killed that pawnbroker. Tell him. Oh, there's a gun I used. It's hidden. It's hidden under the back seat. Be here any minute. Mr. Clay, listen. 
A terrible thing is happening. Terrible. And there isn't much time. Huh? An innocent man is going to die. An innocent man, Mr. Clay. He didn't do anything. I'm oh, afraid you're right, Bobby. Poor man couldn't know the street was wet. No, sir, that isn't what I meant. Another man, an innocent man. Now, Bobby, this man was alone in the car and the street was absolutely empty. Now, you're confused, son. Mr. Clay, let me tell you what happened. You don't have to tell me, Bobby. I saw the whole thing with my own eyes. Uh, please, now, I, I'm too upset to... Uh, uh, there, there's the police car. Uh, Bobby, I, I really think you should go home. This is no place for... But, Mr. Clay, this is important. Uh, You've got to listen. Way, officer, over here. I saw the whole thing. You skidded. Yeah, dear, terrible thing, officer, terrible. Yeah, I see what you mean. Anyone else hurt? Uh, nobody, nobody else involved, driving alone. You hit the wet street, you see, you skidded and crashed right into that... Officer, uh, I gotta tell you something. A man's gonna die for nothing. All He's right, take it easy, it. son. We'll do all we can for him. All right, everybody. Everybody stand way back, please. Make plenty of room. You too, Sonny. But I gotta tell you something. You gotta listen. Not now, Sonny. Step way back, kid. In fact, go home. All right, clear the way and let that ambulance through. You, kid, I said go home. Right here, Doc. Right here. Thrown right out of the car when he hit the lamppost. All right, Mr. Clay, you want to give me the details? Of course. All took just a couple of seconds. I was standing right there in the doorway of my store. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this car turns in from Maple Street. Uh, going a little fast, maybe. Please, Mr. Clay, uh, let me tell the officer what I know. How fast I would you say, Mr. Clay? Oh, 40, 45, maybe. The minute I saw him start into the skid, I said to myself... Honest, if the man doesn't wake up, nobody will know. Sure, Mr. He Clay, there was no other car on the street? Positive. Officer, Mr. Clay. Unconscious when you got to him, I guess. Out cold. I thought he was dead. Close to dead right now. Well, I guess that's about it. Officer. All right. Get back, everybody. Make room with the ambulance. Get out. Hey, call in and tell him to hurry that tow car. Please, listen. I got to tell you something before it's too late. Son, I told you we're busy. Haven't got time for kids now. Be a good boy. Go home. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. You certainly do, like why you're so late. Do you know how long you've been? I was just beginning to worry. Yes, Mama, but I couldn't help it this time. Listen, Mama, something happened. You well, realize I... it's almost 8 o'clock? Yes, Mama, that's just it. It'll be too late. Bobby, the ice cream is leaking right through the carton. Oh, Bobby, for goodness sakes, here, give me that. Yes, Mama, but but please, let me let me tell you what happened. You don't know what ice I... cream's all melting. I'll have to get into the freezer. Really, Bobby, sometimes... Mama, there was an accident. An accident? You're hurt. Uh, darling, what happened to you? Nothing, Mama. The accident didn't happen to me. To someone else. A man. It's what I was trying to tell you. Oh, Bobby, really, you scared the wits out of me. I'm sorry, but you got to let me tell you this. you got to. Now, it's important. <laughs> I guess if you don't tell this wonderful story, you'll burst. And we don't want that, do we? Well, what is it you're trying to say? Gee, I thought I'd never get to tell you. You see, there's a man. He's not bad. He didn't do what they think he did. The other man... Now, he, now, he now wait a minute, darling. Slow down. What man are you talking about? Why was he bad? He wasn't bad. That's just it. He didn't kill anybody. They just think he did. It was the other man. Oh, uh, uh, just a minute, darling. That must be your Aunt Louise. I've been expecting her call. Excuse me. Hello. Mama, please. You said you'd listen. Louise? Yes, well, did you look it up? Mama, let me tell it to you from the beginning. Then maybe you'll understand. Uh, just a second, Louise. Bobby, dear, don't interrupt Mother when she's on the phone. Hello, Louise. <laughs> yes, just Bobby. Naturally. Right now, while I'm on the phone. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Oh, of course, every time. Well, why should your youngster be any different? Mama, please ask Aunt Louise to hold the wire. <laughs> you said you'd listen. Well, what's that, Louise? Uh, one second. Bobby, if you keep talking while I'm on the phone, I can't hear Aunt Louise. Uh, hello, dear. Uh, just Bobby again. Now, what were you saying? Mama! Gosh, dear. Yes? Oh, you have the recipe right in front of you. Well, then start with the part after two heaping cups of sugar. I'm sure I'm right up to there. A man will die, Mama. He'll die. Hey, here, Bobby. Yes? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Now I see where I made my mistake. Please, Mama, please. It'll all be my fault. I've got it now, Louise. Thanks, dear. How's Walter? Oh, no. Not again. Well, it's probably just the weather. Mama! Give me my love. Bye, dear. Now, Bobby, what was it you were telling me? About the accident. The man was hurt so bad. He's dying, I think. And he killed somebody. But there's another man, and they'll hang the other man. 
But it's a mistake. He didn't kill anybody. He's innocent. But they don't know that. I well, haven't really... Believe it oh. or not, I'm home. <laughs> There's Daddy. Hi, Roy. Now, Bobby, I really have to get dinner ready, and I'm sure that if the man didn't kill anyone, nobody will want to hang him. Anyway, if it was all an accident... Wait, you didn't hear the whole thing. Well, not now, dear. Tell me your story later. But, Mama, there's no time. Of course there is. It just seems that way to a boy of 11. But really, whatever it is you want to tell me, I'm sure there's plenty of time. <laughs> you reconsider? What? Reconsider what we discussed. Won't you see the chaplain now? Who? The chaplain, Burton. He wants to stay with you. Oh, yes, I remember. No, Warden, thank you very much, but tell him I'd rather not. It would help. It would make it easier. Please believe me. It wouldn't help. Not now, not anymore. I don't want words of comfort. I don't want words. He wants you to know that he won't preach to you. He just wants you to have a friend with you now. And he is your friend, Burton, I know. Tell him I understand how he feels. But I just can't cooperate. Nobody can help me now. Well, son, no hello for your dad? Hello, Daddy. Daddy, I gotta tell you something. Can I? Of course you can. Just give me a chance to wash up. Hey, you could stand to wash yourself. Come on upstairs. And you listen? Sure. Well, first, Daddy, I better tell you about this man in jail. Jail, huh? What do you know about that? He's innocent. A and tonight. Yeah, well, what's for dinner? Chicken. If you don't hurry, bird chicken. <laughs> we'll hurry. Come on, Bobby. Daddy, please, listen. It's important. Sure, sure. Now into the bathroom with you. Quick. If somebody doesn't tell what really watch happened, your face, then. Bobby. Daddy, it's getting late. The other man oh, told me to... your face. And here's your towel. You see, th there was an accident. Now, let me to the sink, Bobby. I have to wash, too, you know. And the man was hurt. And he'll die before anyone knows that the man in jail didn't kill anyone. He did. The other one. Understand what I mean, Daddy? Bobby, Bobby, the towel. Quick, I got soap in my eyes. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Oh, we've got to tell him in time, or the man will did be... Did Mama get my gray suit from the cleaners? You didn't listen. I told you it was important. Bobby, where are you going? Police Department, First Precinct, Front Desk, Officer Moody. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am. Your daughter's over 21? No, ma'am. Afraid there's nothing we can do about that. No, I understand, ma'am. You feel he has shifty luck. But if she wants to marry him... Oh, no, I understand, ma'am. Shifty around the eyes. Oh, sure. Well, maybe you'll get used to it. Oh, no, never hesitate to call us. Oh, brother. Oh, officer. Ah, now a kid. Oh, this is my day. Officer, I gotta tell you something. You gotta listen. Officer, you're the same one. The one at the accident on Laurel Avenue. Huh? Oh, yeah, the kid. Yak, yak, yak. Are you haunting me? You wouldn't listen before. Please, please, you gotta listen now. They're hanging Burton tonight, and he's innocent. Lieutenant Bayer, big flash for you. Yes? This little boy feels you were wrong on the Burton case, says he's innocent. Very funny. Lieutenant Bayer made the Burton arrest, kid. Then I gotta tell him. Look, kid, give us a chance to do our job. Arrest people who did something bad. Now go on home now. How do you like that? Six crackpots in here today convinced Burton is innocent. Same six we get every time on the day of an execution. But a kid is a new experience. It's that kid. He threw a stone through the window. Get him back in here. I did it. You can arrest me. And then will you listen to me? Of all the... Do you realize what you just did? You don't look like the kind of boy who does a thing like that. What's the idea? Well, I, I have to make you listen. Yes, I guess you did. All right, I'll listen. But this better be good. On 
something like that. Hospital says he's still breathing in a coma. Get me a car. I'll keep the kid with me. You're taking this seriously? I have to. This kid described what certainly sounds like a deathbed confession. I've got to check it out. It's 9.30. Burton hangs at 10. And I arrested Burton. And if the guy dies before he can speak again... Then so will Burton. Get that car. Isn't he? Yes. Will he die? Any minute. Can he wake up for a little? And you see what the doctor and nurse are doing. They're trying. But he already told me, and I told you. Look, you're sure you told me everything he said, that he knew he was dying, that he confessed, that he killed the pawnbroker, that Burton is innocent. Is that everything? Yes, sir. That's everything. Hello, kid. He woke up. I'm Lieutenant Byer of Homicide. Do you have a statement to make to the police? You brought them, kid. Yes, sir. We've very little time. You realize you're dying. Yes. The statement you make to me has the solemn force of a deathbed confession, so help you God. Yes. Yes. I killed that pawnbroker. Burton is innocent. So help me God. And the gun? The gun? What did you do with... No use, he's dead. I should have the proof. I should have the proof. What proof? He told you. The gun, the missing gun that would guarantee the thing. Oh, I know where that is. What? That's the other thing he told me. The gun is under the back seat of his car. Hello. Hello, operator. This is Lieutenant Byer of the city police. This call is official. Get me Maple 1000. Urgent. Hello. This is Byer Homicide. Put me through to the wrecked car. Pound fast. What time is it? Ten minutes to ten. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mac. What's holding us up? Look, I said fast. Emergency. So ring on another line. Only one. Then break in. You can do that. I don't care if he's talking. I don't care who he's talking to. I don't care if he's talking to Eisenhower. Break in. Big deal. Walsh is talking. Come on, McGillicuddy. Tell Walsh it's me. This is a must. Hello. Hello, Walsh. Fire. Never mind that. This is important and immediate. Right. You have a wreck towed in from a Laurel Avenue crash a couple of hours ago, right? You're looking right at it now. Look under the back seat and tell me what you find, and hurry. Keep your fingers crossed, kid. Hello, you did? What caliber? 38. Perfect. Hello, operator, this is Lieutenant Byer again. Official call again. Immediately, matter of life or death, get me the state penitentiary. Bobby, for the third time, will you forget about the window I told you? The window is on me. Thanks. Forget it, you're the department's guest. And stop thanking me for driving you home. A detective your age can't be walking alone at night. Yes, sir. You know, for a boy of 11, you did quite a job tonight. You saved a man's life. You heard me talk to the warden. You won. With six minutes to spare. It was pretty wonderful. So why do you still look worried? Because I never stayed out so late before. And I ran out of the house without dinner. What do my mother and father say? Now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they were very proud when you tell them the whole story. But when I tell them, will they listen? Suspense. You have been listening to A Matter of Execution. Written for Suspense by Harold Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Peter Laser, Ginger Jones, Santos Sotega, Martin Blaine, Bernard Grant, Nat Poland, Sam Raskin, Bill Adams, and Harold Huber. Listen again next week when we return with After the Movies, a story of money, money to buy a funeral. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense.